Hey, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to explore how to consolidate different Excel files using Python to prepare a summarized Excel document, including a chart. Let's get started. So for this tutorial, we're going to take a number of different workbooks, namely these ones here, each which have a number of different columns, including the item column, the price column, and the date column, where each workbook is named after the different salesperson that conducted all of these sales. So we have a total of seven different workbooks here that you can download on my GitHub page, which I'll link to right in the description. So go ahead and download it now if you want to follow along, load it into whatever directory you want to use, and then we can get started. What we're going to end up with is a document that looks something like this, where we have our salespeople as rows, quarters belonging to different sales as the columns, and the total sales for each salesperson in that quarter as the values. We'll also include an Excel chart here, which you can later customize using different formats and styles. Let's get started. All right, so I'm back in VS Code here, and I've already written a little bit of code here just to get us started. We're gonna be using three main libraries in this tutorial. First, we'll import pandas, and we'll alias it as pd. We'll also import glob, in order to be able to look at different files across our directory. And then we'll import a number of different functions from the OpenPyXL library. If you don't have any of these installed right now, you can use either pip or conda to install them. I've also included a file path here. This is where my files are currently stored. So if you've unarchived your files and placed them, say, on your desktop, you'll want to locate where they are here. So right now, my files are in a folder called Excel Magic on my desktop. If you're using Windows, you'll likely want to prefix your string with an R to make sure that Python reads it as a raw string so that your backslashes don't get escaped. The last thing that I've done here is included a wildcard asterisk followed by the file extension of the file that we're using. So the file extension isn't really necessary, but it does help us if we have different file types in this folder here. So right now my folder looks something like this. As you can see, I only have XLSX files in the folder, but just to be safe, I'm using uh, the uh, extension suffix in the string as well. So first we're gonna use glob, and if you aren't familiar with glob, I have a link to a tutorial down in the description below in terms of how you can pull out different files. What we're going to want to do is create a new variable called files, and then we're going to use glob, like so, and pass in the file path. So what this is going to do is it's going to look through this file path with any of these file names in there as long as the file ends in xlsx and add it to our list. So now when we, re when we print out our file list, we can see here that it's actually returned all of the different files within that folder. This is really helpful because what we can do now is iterate over each of these different files in order to parse out the information within them. So in order to create the summary file, what we're gonna want to do is first create an empty data frame to be able to store all of our information in. So what we're gonna do is write df equals pd data frame and this is just an empty data frame that doesn't really have anything in it right now. Now what we want to do is loop over each of the files in files and append it to our data frame. So when we do this, we can write for file in files. So this is going to look at each of the files in our container files. Create a new data frame, which we're just going to call tempdf for temporary data frame going to read Excel, and then we're going to put in the file, and then we're going to want to append that to our empty data frame. So we're going to write df equals df.append temp df, and we're just going to set ignore index to true so that we get a complete index later on. So let's take a look at what this looks like. We're going to print out df. So we can see here that, yep, we've been able to combine all of the information. There's only one big problem. We can't actually tell who made the sale. So what we're gonna want to do is include a variable 
as a column within our data within our temporary data frame in order to be able to identify which salesperson those records actually belong to. So we're going to include a new line here and so we're going to put a name and what we can pass in here is actually the file name because the file name includes the person's name. So when we do this and run everything again we can see that we've now included a little bit more information but we really just care about the name. So what we can do is actually replace all of the extraneous information in here so that we can just parse out the name. Now, an easy way to do this is just by using the string replace method. So what we can do is write tempdf for the column name, then str.replace, and then I'm just gonna copy my path here all the way to where the name begins, then in strings. So this is what we're going to be looking for. And then after the comma, we'll just put in what we want to replace it with. So we're saying for every instance of that column, find this value here and replace it with nothing. So when we run this now, we can see that it's actually removed all of that from the beginning. We can do something very similar for the end of it, by just changing this piece here to .xlsx. So I'm gonna copy this line down and then change the beginning of this to .xlsx and run this again. Now we actually have a full column here with just the name for each salesperson. So in order to create the summary, we can use the pandas pivot table function. I have a full video dedicated to this, so if you want to learn more after this tutorial, be sure to check this out. I've linked it up here if you want to watch it now. So what we can do, so I'm going to call my pivot table pivot. We're going to use the pandas pivot table function. The first argument we're going to pass in is the data argument. For that, we're going to use our consolidated data frame df. Now, what we want to be able to return is to have as rows, we want to have the list, uh, we want to have the names of the salesperson. As columns, we want to aggregate the information to quarters. And then as values, we want to actually have the value of whatever was being sold summed up across the different sales that each person made across different time periods. So our index is going to be our new column name, our columns, is going to be df date and then we're going to put in dt for our date time accessor and type in quarter then as values we're going to pass in our column price as our aggregation function we're going to use sum so now when we print pivot out what we're going to get back is our full summary aggregated by, co uh, by columns. So we can see here that in quarter one, Aziz sold this amount of items. Similarly, in quarter two, he sold this amount of items. So we've been able to create what's essentially an Excel pivot table just using pandas. So our next step is to really put this into an Excel document. Now, we can do this very easily still using pandas by using the pd to excel function. So what we'll do is we'll write pivot dot to excel. And now what we need to put in is a path name essentially. So I'm just gonna take the path name that we had earlier and just copy it down. And I'm gonna call this save file path. And so I'm just gonna put it directly on my desktop and I'll call this summary.xlsx. So as our first argument, we'll put in save file path, and then we can also put in a sheet name, and we'll call this summary. So let's run this and see what happens. So we can see here that we have a column called name, where we have all the different salespeople, a row that contains all of the different quarters in that year. However, none of these values are really formatted in a way that we want them to be. For this, we can use OpenPy Excel. So let's close this down and look at how we can do that. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create 
a workbook object. We'll call this wb for workbook and we'll use the work the load workbook function. And we'll pass in this variable here where our Excel file is stored. So we'll pass in save file path. So we called our sheet summary. So we'll create a new variable called sheet and we'll access it like this. Now what we've been able to do is create a new variable called sheet which contains all of the information within the sheet called summary in our WB object workbook. So what we can do now is actually tell Excel that we want to format certain cells as currency cells. So the way that we can do this is first we'll have to take a look at where our information is stored. So we can see here that it ranges from the second column in the second row to the fifth column in the eighth row. OpenPyXL can only apply the formatting to a single cell at a time. So we're going to use nested for loops. So we're going to write for column in, and then we're going to pass in the column names. So it went from B to E. And then for row in. So we want it to go from rows 2 through 8. So we're going to write from range 2 through 9. Then we're going to take, then we'll access the sheet and we'll access using an F string. And if you don't know about F strings, I really suggest you check out my tutorial that I'll link to right up here by accessing the column as well as the row. And then we'll use the style attribute and label it as currency. So before we run this, we actually need to just be able to save the workbook. We can do this by writing wb.save, which will save the workbook, but we also need to tell it where to save it. We have our locations stored here in our save file path variable, so I'll just enter that. And now let's run this to see whether or not it works. We can open the workbook and see that all of these values here have now been formatted as currency. Now, the last part of the puzzle is actually being able to add in an Excel chart to be able to visualize the data better. For this, we can use uh, OpenPyXL's bar graph method. So I'm gonna insert a couple of blank rows here just to give us space. And what we're gonna to want to do is create a new variable of the bar graph class. So we're gonna instantiate this. We're gonna write bar graph equals bar chart, and then these open and close parentheses. Now we're gonna to have to tell OpenPyXL where our data is actually stored. And we can do this by writing the following. We'll create a new variable called data, and then we'll use the reference function where we're gonna say that the, that the values are stored in our variable sheet. The min column, column here is gonna be the second one because that's where our data actually starts. The max column is gonna be the fifth one. The min row that we're gonna to wanna to capture is the first one because we'll want it to include our data around the different quarters. And our max row is gonna be the eighth one. So now the last piece that we really wanna get from our worksheets before we actually create these worksheets is where our categorical data is stored. So our categorical data here are the different salespeople. So what we're gonna call these is categories. And again, we'll use the reference function here. So we're gonna say it's in sheet with a min call of one, a max column of one, a min row of two, and a max row of eight. So that will cover off all of the different salespeople. Now we're gonna to wanna to use the add data function. So we're gonna add onto our bar graph by accessing our bar graph variable, then the add data function, and we're gonna say data. We're gonna say titles from data is equal to true because we will wanna be able to pass in our information about the different quarters. Now we're gonna to wanna to add the categories. So we can do this in a very similar way by writing bar graph. And then we're gonna use the set categories method. And we're just gonna pass in the categories here. Before we actually add the chart to the workbook, we're gonna to wanna to add a title to our graph. We can use this by using the title attribute and uh, adding a different value to it. So we'll write bar graph dot title equals, and then whatever you wanna call it. So we'll call it sales, by person, by quarter. 
So the last piece is actually telling OpenPyXL where to add our bar chart. So we're going to tell it to, in our sheet, to add a chart. And that chart is going to be our bar graph. And we want it to be positioned, say, in cell F2. So let's run this. So when we open up our workbook, we can see that our chart has been with its left uppermost corner beginning in cell F2, been placed here, and our values have actually still been formatted as currency. So this is really exciting because for the most part, we were able to just completely automate this analysis without ever really needing to touch Excel other than to be able to figure out where our references are. Thanks so much for watching this video. I really hope that you learned something new. If you have any questions about this uh, video, be sure to leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. If you haven't yet subscribed, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon to be notified when I release new videos just like this one. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.